Chamai. My name is Marnie. I am the registrar at the Alutic Museum and Archaeological Repository in Kodiak, Alaska. And I am going to demonstrate how we label our artifacts. I'm going to talk about materials and the procedure. Uh, first, I will start with our materials. Here we have an acrylic resin B72, which we obtained from University Products. This is part of our base coat. It is shipped to you in pellets. In order to create our base coat, you must also mix this with acetone. This is not any regular acetone, but uh, acetone from Fisher Scientific. You can also order the acetone from any lab supply company. I would not recommend getting acetone from the hardware store as it contains other additives. The top coat is a gloss medium varnish. This brand is Liquitex. To mix the base coat of B72, you will take 20 grams of the pellets, weigh them out, there's my 20 grams, how convenient, and you will mix this with acetone in your bottle. Now these bottles we were able to obtain from SKS Bottle Supply simply because they would ship to Alaska. Um, some people prefer the wide mouth jars and you can also dissolve the resin pellets easier in them. I have a picture on my computer that shows the, the jar. You can use cheesecloth and uh, float the pellets into the acetone and it will dissolve. If you only have these type of glass jars with the narrow neck, you can mix the B72 and acetone right in the jar. It takes about 24 hours to dissolve and simply stir it lightly, not to get any air bubbles, to mix it up. As you can see, I have labeled the bottle. We do conform to OSHA standards and have MSDS data sheets on all of our products. Acetone is, can be harmful to breathe in and I believe even if you get it on your skin. So be aware of any chemicals that you may use. You can use B72 as the base coat on pretty much anything except plastic. It does not work well with plastic. It will um, degrade the plastic. Normally I wear gloves. These happen to be in our teaching collection and for demonstrative purposes, I'm not gonna wear gloves, but I do recommend wearing gloves. First, oh yes, I'm gonna cut out my number. These are printed numbers um, with our catalog numbers on archival paper the Permalife archival paper. If this is too thick, you can use um, a thinner paper such as Japanese tissue, anything that you can run through a laser printer. You do not want to use inkjet ink as it will run. We use a Xerox copier. And it works just great. So cut out my lovely number here. I will apply the base coat of B72. Um, this is a bone artifact. It is a bit porous, and that is why I do 20 grams to 100 milliliters of acetone. I probably forgot to say that. You wanna add 100 milliliters of acetone to your 20 grams of B72 pellets. Um, a good inf source of information is the Society for Historical Archaeology. They recommend 15 grams. For us, it is too thin, um, especially when working with porous materials. And as you have this open, the acetone is going to dissolve, so this solution is going to thicken over time anyway. Uh, you want to pick someplace smooth. If, the wa if this was an artifact you'd want to display, you'd want to consider the display aspects of your um, placement. So something that you're going to be able to find easily, yet your exhibits coordinator is not going to be upset with you about. So I applied the base coat. If you just dip a little bit, oops, and this is very porous, so I'm going to need a second base coat. This is a dental tool. Go see your dentist and get a tool. Stick your little number on there. Make sure all the edges are stuck down. And then you can take your top coat. 
the varnish. You do not need to wait for your the coats to dry in between. Once this is finished, it will take 20 minutes for it to dry. So don't put it back in the box till it dries. And there we have a labeled artifact. If you have any questions, please let me know. You may reach me through the looptickmuseum.org website. Thank you.